Hello everyone, you are watching Blackboard. We have discussed the basic steps through which a tissue specimen goes through in a histopathology laboratory. Today, we will learn more about specimen receiving at reception and its processing at grossing station. Let's first have a look at specimen receiving at reception in detail. Specimen rejection criteria. Number one, specimen container with incomplete information must be rejected or subjected to inquiry. Number two, mismatching information on specimen container and request form must be rejected. Number three, both the specimen container and request form must be labeled with sufficient identifiers. For example, name, age, and gender of the patient, lab identifier, date and time of surgical procedure, specimen type, or specimen site. Keep in mind that such details shouldn't be written on the lid of specimen container. Number four, specific and sufficient fixative should be used and prompt fixation should be ensured. If a specimen is immense in insufficient or inappropriate fixative, then it should be rejected. Keep in mind, water cannot be used in place of fixative. Note that a sufficient fixative volume with respect to tissue specimen, that is the ratio of at least 20 ratio 1 is used in an appropriate container. This ensures good quality fixation. Number 5. Inappropriate choice of container size can lead to squashing of tissue and it should be rejected. Number six, check the pH of fixative. For example, if formalin, the most commonly used fixative, if it is used at an acidic pH, it rapidly produces formalin pigments by reacting with hemoglobin. So bear in mind, if the pH of fixative is disturbed, it should be rejected. Precautions to be considered at reception are, number one, Prevent specimen drying prior to fixation, and this can be avoided by placing the specimen at a gauze piece moistened with saline. Number two, avoid local heat and chemical damage to specimens prior to fixation. Number three, avoid unnecessary delays and transport it to histopathology laboratory as soon as possible. Number four, Handle the specimens gently. What details should be present on the request form? This is how a request form looks like. It must have patient identifiers like patient's name, age, gender, unique identifier that is specific to patient like a health record, date of birth, name and address or suitable identifiers of the authorized person requesting the test, the individual responsible for receiving the test results, and the laboratory submitting the specimen. Next, name of test or tests to be performed, specimen type and anatomical site of the specimen, date and time of procedure or specimen collection, date and time of specimen received, clinical history of the patient, warm and cold ischemic time, transport time, total fixation time, and the name of fixative. Warm ischemic time is the time from the interruption of blood supply to the tumor by the surgeon to the excision of the tissue specimen, whereas cold ischemic time is the time from excision to the initiation of tissue fixation. After all these considerations, specimen container along with its request form is sent to grossing room. Materials to be present on the grossing station are sterile gloves, face masks, plastic aprons, gauze pieces, filter papers, lead pencils or glass marking pencil. Instruments required at the grossing station are butcher knives, straight scissors, forceps, stainless steel scale, scalpel, probe, cutting board, small axe, surgical blade, stainless steel tray, 
and India Inc. for marking or identification. At the grossing station, biopsy is taken out of the formalin container. Measurements are taken such as size, shape, presence of lesions or any other abnormality present in the biopsy. Then the pathologist cuts various sections from the biopsy and places them in cassettes with appropriate labeling. For example, if four sections are being cut from a biopsy specimen and the identifier of it is 230, then cassettes will be labeled as 230A, 230B, 230C and 230D and will also mention the type of sections in each cassette. What if you receive very small biopsy pieces? No problem. Simply place and wrap these pieces into a filter paper and then place them into a cassette. This will avoid the loss of very small biopsy pieces. If biopsy received is the piece of a bone, then it needs to be decalcified to make it soften so that it can easily be cut on the microtome. And this process is called decalcification. Here what happens is the acid present in decalcifying fluid removes calcium salt present in hard tissue and make it soft enough for section cutting. The tissue is immersed in the chosen decalcifying solution. Commonly used decalcifying agents include formic acid, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid and EDTA. The time required for decalcification can vary depending on the size and type of the tissue as well as the concentration and type of decalcifying agent used and it can range from a few hours to several days. During this process, the decalcifying agent interacts with the calcium salts helping to dissolve or chelate them and once decalcification is complete, the tissue is thoroughly washed with water to remove any traces of the decalcifying agent and here you go, decalcification is completed. Now it's time to like my video, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to stay tuned.